All right, this episode of Cell TV, this could be why you still don't feel well or even why you got the dreaded diagnosis. This is a very important episode uh, because I don't know if you saw the movie Root Cause, but it was taken off of Netflix. That's how much controversy is around this topic of root canals, cavitations, hidden infections, and how it's driving autoimmune cancer and diseases. And again, even just hormone disruption. You're going to get the answers on this episode when I interview Dr. Jerry Kiratola. As a matter of fact, you're going to see something shocking that happened to my wife and why this doctor <laughs> saved and changed her life. And also we're gonna talk about the proper way to get cavitations in root canals fixed what you need to discover, or I should say do to discover these hidden infections, uh, all of that is gonna be discussed in this episode. This is going to be one you're going to wanna to share and definitely you're not gonna to wanna to miss. I'll see you in the episode. Here with Dr. Jerry Caratola. <laughs> One, do, one of my favorites. Okay, so this episode, you know, we're we're good buds. So uh, you're going to get uh, a lot of fun in this episode. But this is a serious topic. I mean, so it, it'll be hard for us to pull back. Um, but if we keep it fun, then we're going to keep people learning. That's for sure. You know, I, I titled this, this may be why you don't feel well still. And this may be why you're sick or got a, a diagnosis. You know, th this is a topic. We did a show uh, gosh, I don't know. Well, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. Yeah, I mean, it was episode 210. And I'll tell you what, that episode um, has brought a lot of people to a big understanding. It's brought a lot of people here, fortunately. As a matter of fact, I was brought to tears yesterday in your office because, you know, sometimes I get beat down, man. You know, it's like, gosh, it's like, is this making a difference? Am I making a difference? Yeah. And I walked in your waiting room um, and there was a woman and she said, Oh, well, you know, I'm here because I watched a podcast of yours. That's it was, exactly most right. likely it was that one. And, you know, and anyway, she went on to tell her story. And then there was another woman who was here that, um, matter of fact, we could put up the Facebook link on this, Ashley, um, because uh, she, one of my patients who you helped that I sent here, sent her here. And this poor girl was sick her whole life, unexplainable yeah. stuff, gut problems, diagnosed with Lyme, diagnosed with low immunity, of course low immunity, but yet not one person looked here. And she had a massive, massive infection. She had a crown with metal over top of metal, which was an amalgam that you said you pulled out about three thermometers full of mercury out of. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I literally teared up a couple times. I you. He brought me in to the surgery, fortunately, and that's when we did the Facebook Live, and you can watch that. But um, I teared up a few times because I realized she was literally right before my very eyes getting her life back. And then seeing the other woman getting her life back and my other patient here, it was an emotional day for me, honestly. And, and here we are in an emotional subject. And I, I truly mean it because um, I have, I told you, I have a stack of folders of testimonies uh, from just people. I, I, and many of them came here but people who got infection, hidden infection taken out of their mouth, either in a root canal or a cavitation. And literally, I've gotten texts or emails before they even left the office saying, oh my gosh, my life's different. And one, one patient in particular, and you know, we never know. I, I mean, I always look at, I always knew and aspired to the philosophy of Western Price who in the early 1900s, he actually founded the research arm of the American Dental Association. But he spoke about focal infections in the mouth and the systemic complications in 1912 or 1913. Didn't he and, do the, the experiments with the rabbit where yeah. he literally took tissue and put it in the rabbit? That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and um, I always knew that there, there is this very intimate connection between the mouth and the body. It's, why I wrote the book, The Mouth Body Connection. <laughs> We're looking around. And you can get it on tape. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, 
Uh, well, it's not tape. Tape. I mean, that tells how old we are. Yeah, that's, tape. that's true. You can get I it on an MP3. You can download it on Kindle. You have it on eight track. Is it on eight track? Okay, because that's what I have on my car. <laughs> exactly. But you know, it, it's interesting. You know, what I love that you're doing, Dan, is, and this is the most profound thing. And I thought about this this morning. The wall between medicine and dentistry is coming down. The 150 year divide that separated this from the rest of the body. 150 years ago, there were medical schools and dental schools, and it began, it began. It never used to be that way. As a matter of fact, it never separated in Europe. And you know, in dental school, we were told, oh, you know, yes, you know, infections in the mouth could be a problem. You know, gum disease, you can lose your teeth. No, gum disease, you can lose your life. Yeah. And you have a, some uh, upwards of 10 times greater chance of a heart attack, seven times greater chance of adult onset diabetes, yeah. 67 higher percent incidence of pancreatic cancer in men. I mean, the number one but, but, bacteria. By the way, there yeah. was just a new study out February 2018 for the CDC stated that seven out of 10 the chronic degenerative diseases they believe is coming from oral microbes. Absolutely. To your point. And, and a study uh, out of Harvard finding that the number one bacteria found in colorectal tumors, colon cancer, um, is uh, Fusobacterium nucleatum, one of the most common bacteria in the mouth. So this, this amazing oral systemic link and understanding this is, is one factor, but what you are digging into when you say you have these testimonials of people, I can tell you, that, you know, and I've been practicing for over 35 years. It'll be 36 years in June. And I want to tell you that I am so excited about the work that I'm doing right now because I see people getting better because they are, we are able to identify stealth infections in the mouth and the very profound ever. effects they have on the body. And so many people are suffering um, with all kinds of illness. And, you know, I believe that 90% of the body's toxicity outside of the yeah. environment around us is what's going on I in agree. your mouth. I, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, let, let's talk about a case. And I, I can use this gentleman's name because um, he did a Facebook Live uh, for me. And he gave his story. <clears throat> Matter of fact, he's so excited because he has his life back. He's coming to the seminar that you and I are te both teaching at uh, next week. And um, Tommy, if you're watching this, yeah, I'm talking about you. He literally um, was sending me a text uh, on the way out of this office. And he said, Dan, is it possible that my 20 years of pain could, uh, you know, could be gone already? And I said, yeah, Tommy, it could. Yeah. And you know what? It is. And, it's, and that, was, that was getting one cavitation. And we'll talk yeah. more about what we're talking about. We'll actually show you. But these are infections in the jaw that typically don't have pain. Tommy didn't. But anyways, and it's also very, very important to point out that these types of defects in the jaw, what we call cavitational mm -hmm. osteoporosis, before the advance of technology that we're using now, like 3D cone beam, we, um, most dentists would ignore them. They didn't even know they were there. No, I know. You know yeah. they, we'll, we'll show these and we're going to show you how to detect these because uh, advancements in this area have come a long way. So, you know, Tommy literally, so he, uh, 20 years of pain liver pain for 20 years went away before he that was just giving the infection and by the way there was still one more infection which i don't know if you know this but you he just you just worked on tommy a few weeks ago yes and he had the exact so that what was basically still there after the first one um another miracle i mean uh, you know it, it lifted wonderful. again i mean some of the other conditions he had wonderful. were lifted after that in the fiction you know was basically um taken out so the point is and, and that doesn't happen all the time no you know, it, does, I mean, it, it I mean, doesn't and that's a good thing to point out we're not here to say that if i do this you're going to get up and right walk. right that just no. that happened I mean, that's how I mean, it's happened it's not what this is about what it's about is eliminating these potential sources of stealth infection it's an opportunistic area a cavitation is a um is a colloquial term we use for a hole in the jaw can we call it a hole in a tooth we call a cavity, a cavitation is a hole in the jaw. The technical term is cavitation washing necrosis. There's, there, is, there are areas, especially around extracted wisdom teeth, 
where the tooth is removed and the area doesn't adequately heal, the bone doesn't right. go in. So what you're left with is a perfect um, hiding place for all kinds of pathogens. They have uh, biopsied and, and taken Lyme spirochetes, candida, mold, all kinds of pathogens that can harbor in these areas. Why? Because they're like little dark caves. Yeah, right? no, exactly. And, no, and they're warm, it. they're dark, they're moist. And prior to actively engaging in getting these areas to regenerate and close, and we'll talk about that, yeah. because this, this has been treated for years and years, especially in Europe, in, in um, biologic dentists in Europe recognize these. Um, these also form around teeth that are failing and dental infections, which we had a technical term called periapical area. You know, in actuality, it could be a cyst, mm -hmm. but it is generally creating this resorption of bone and this area, this dead area, um, that is um, often, uh, I, I often like to say that, you know, you, 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 you really, these are supercharged pathogens, yeah. you know, because oh, they're man. able to kind of come to critical mass there and do what we never used to believe but really affect the body in ways very interesting ways um, that your teeth connect to your body yeah we're going to talk about that because let, let's talk about why these create the disease but you know it, just to bring it to them because they're saying could this be me and, and I'm right on the statistic here if you had a wisdom tooth out 25 years ago you have an 88% chance of having a cavitation, yeah, right? Like, yeah. and, and each, each tooth forward, it's, it gets a little less. It's in the 80s. It's like 86 to 80 bit. But they're finding now, through the use of cone beam and screening patients, anyone who had their wisdom teeth out should really have a CBCT, a 3D, what's called a cone beam. It's, it's cone beam computerized tomography. Um, it gives us a 3D representation. So when you take a regular dental x-ray, um, you could have a lesion in the middle here, but because the bone is superimposed, the two sides on the lower jaw, the cortical bone on each side, you, it's superimposed. It's very difficult to see what's here. But now with the use of 3D computerized tomography, cone beam technology, we're able to get this 3D image of your jaw where we can see lesions that were never visible before. Two, two mistakes. Number one, people go to their dentist, they take a plain film as he's describing, and they say, oh, you look fine. Can't see it on plain film. Uh, and here's the other mistake. They get a cone beam 3D x-ray that he's describing done. They end up sending the disc to the dentist. The dentist puts it in and reads it. He doesn't have the correct software. He reads it as a plain film. Jerry, that's happened many times. So many and I times. says, no, 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 you're going to send it to Jerry. And Jerry actually does, you do Skype. Uh, no, I do Skype consults all, all the yeah. time. And I'm able to get this digital, Im you know, if, if people can get them taken anywhere in the world. Right. And I'm able to get this digital image and read it correctly and, and let them know whether or not indeed they have these potential areas right. uh, uh, that could be problematic for their systemic health. Okay, let's talk about why this would make someone sick, right? I, I made the comment in the beginning, I, you know, I was blessed to be in the, the surgery and see that surgery going down with that young lady. You know, she had all of these health issues. How is this connected, you know, to why someone may not be feeling well, have a hormone problem or whatever they're dealing with? Well, there's three different ways that, um, uh, a bacterial infection in the mouth can communicate with the rest of the body. One is the direct, um, the rec the direct. Uh, in other words, you have a cesspool of bacteria, and these pathogens enter the bloodstream and can go to different places and cause issues. Drive but what, right? And um, another way um, is by really creating a chronic inflammation, and that's a big thing is that chronic low-grade inflammation. In other words, you know, G.B. Black, by the way, the father of modern dentistry in the early 1900s, spoke about cavitations. And he said they were these unique areas where there wasn't a fever, um, there wasn't swelling, right. and there wasn't pain. I had no No fever, no swelling, no pain. Mm -hmm. Yet, it's an area of infection. So it's very interesting that 
that is a source of chronic low-grade inflammation. And what people need to realize, one of the larger sources of chronic low-grade inflammation is gum disease. Yeah. Um, but these areas where um, in the jaw become areas of chronic inflammation, that's the second way that this chronic low-grade inflammation has a huge cascade of events systemically. Your immune system, your yeah. microbiome. Yeah, I mean, everything from the liver releasing C-reactive proteins, and which has inflammatory effects on the entire circulatory system. There's all kinds of ways that chronic low-grade inflammation puts your body on alert. It's like a silent alarm bell going off that's not being answered, right? And, and it has devastating effects for body organs everywhere. The third way is another very very interesting way that I've become so fascinated with. And that is that um, there is a tooth organ relation bit, uh, organ relationship that has been spoken about in the literature for years and you're in Chinese medicine, especially mm -hmm. that there are meridian pathways, energetic pathways from teeth to organs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share a story um, this summer that was so compelling that brought tears to me um, by a patient um, who had a very specific infection related on an energetic meridian to a particular part of her body. This is documented and, and, and fascinating that your teeth, and what I explain to patients now, Dan, is that your teeth are like, um, Circuit breakers. Yeah, I heard you describe it. Okay. I was like, that's a perfect explanation. And what, what people have to understand is that you don't just, you don't catch cancer. Right. You don't just wake up one day, oh, I caught cancer, yeah. like you caught a cold or you or, got a virus. Uh, it's just your genetics, you got cancer. Yeah, or you, you got a genetics, yeah, like my mother yeah. had breast cancer, I got breast cancer, and da da da, da. There, there is something very, very interesting. Our bodies are fighting cancer every day. That's right. We are fighting cancer every day. Why? Because we have this shield of an immune system. We have a shield. It's like the Starship Enterprise. I tell patients like the Starship Enterprise. When the shield is up and the Klingons fire, you know, those, those missiles or those torpedoes, the Klingon torpedoes don't get through the shield. Right. Okay? So the shield is there. When that shield is down, the You're torpedo in gets in. in trouble. So, for example, the energetic meridian, on the upper first molars is connected energetically to the breast, right. the right breast and the left breast. Does it mean that an infection in your upper first molar is gonna give you breast cancer? No, what it means is you have an infection, a, a, this, you know, a failing root canal in your upper first molar, that's like flipping the breaker off. That's great. Energetically, the shield is down yeah. over that part of your body and as a matter of fact, there was a correlative study done by a, a, a good friend of mine, a brilliant um, doctor and dentist, Stuart Nunnally. He was actually on that movie, The Root Cause. Um, and he did a study, he did a study on, I think, 300 women and found like 90% of them had a root canal on, uh, that um, 300 women with breast cancer, 90% of them had a root canal on one or the other first yeah. molars. There's a yeah. huge furor about it. But the fact of the matter is, is that root canals and molars are very difficult. They don't sterilize the tooth. They often trap, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Why do root canals fail? Why are root canals a source of chronic inflammation? What is the new advances in root canal therapy that might show promise in this area? Mm -hmm. Because the conventional, the conventional techniques, in my experience of 35 years, they often do not work. Right, yeah. So. So um, this woman came to me, and I'll just share the story quickly. Um, she was from uh, Houston and referred to me by actually a, 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 a functional practitioner um, who is actually a, a friend of yours. Um, and she uh, was down there, Deb Lance. Deborah, yeah. Deborah, Deborah referred this patient to me. And Deborah said, Jerry, I just had a patient come in who's a friend of mine, and she was diagnosed with lung cancer. And it's her left lung. And um, the first thing I said is, does she have any root canals? That'd be the first and thing I asked. First thing, yeah. does she have any root canals? She had one root canal. One root canal. Where was the root canal? On the lower left first molar. What is the lower left first molar the circuit breaker for? Yeah. Lung, left yeah. lung. Left lung, lower, lower mandibular first molar. 
So she comes up and I said, look, Deb, this is, you know, I'm happy to look at it. Let's see if there's infection around it. Let's get a cone beam. We did a cone beam. Um, and sure enough, there was a massive infection around this, around this tooth. So we removed the tooth. I use a laser that actually uh, You're gonna see that piece here. water yeah. lays, uh, um, the, the, the water lays, the I plus, um, actually has the ability to remove disease tissue, disinfect uh, the area, and then actually stimulate the bone to heal. Because yeah. remember, with the tooth out now, she has a space there. We don't want that to remain you unresolved. Form another and, and cavitation. Can form another cavitation. So we treated it. We used PRF from her arm, which we'll speak about a You're little bit. Platelet rich five and treated it. She had five weeks later, she had her pre surgical evaluation with her oncologist down in Houston. And I got a call from Deborah, um, who reported to me that the tumor had shrunk to a third of its size and that she didn't need surgery. And they biopsied it and it was completely benign. Now, did I save that woman's life? Um, I would like to say that I, that I played a part, by the grace of God, I played a part in helping that woman recover because God gives us this amazing ability to self-regulate and heal. We yeah, have this no amazing no ability doubt. by the divine yeah. um, to self-regulate and heal. So when we remove what's offending, I, I think all we did was flip the circuit breaker back on for her immune system to begin working again. So, you know, all of the big advances in cancer therapy is all surrounding our immune response. Absolutely. Boosting Absolutely. our immune response. So they're using chemotherapeutic, chemotherapeutic drugs in this regard. They're actually even planting viruses to trigger immune response, but everything is about getting our immune system working. Absolutely. And I call that the shield that yeah. goes back up. Yeah. You know, you, to go full circle on Western Price, uh, you know, he took, uh, I mentioned the rabbits. So he took these root canal teeth, right, that have these anaerobic, nasty, nasty pathogens, bacteria, viruses. He put those in rabbits. Describe that. Describe what happened. Yeah, well, those rabbits develop tumors and, and, and cancers. The very disease. The very disease. That was in the person. That was in the person. Yeah. So, I mean, there you have this. You have this, like, like this. okay. And, you know, you know and the thing is, is that, the problem I have, you know, I'm a adjunct clinical associate professor of cariology and comprehensive care at New York University. I, I'm I'm a constant. Um, I have a constant thirst for knowledge and understanding, and the ability for us to help people get better. You sent me a text that was beautiful, and and you said, "I love helping people get better." And you know what? There's no greater feeling than 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 to help somebody on their on their path to live a longer, healthier life. Yeah. I mean, that is what this is about. And and unfortunately, you said behind Dan, don't, these, don't ever change that. I'm like, yeah. the moment that changes, I'm out. I yeah. texted yeah. back, don't ever, don't ever yeah. stop. Don't this. ever stop don't, feeling that. Don't way. ever stop yeah. feeling that way. It is a great feeling. It and is. and you know the the disappointing part is when. Um, orthodox medicine, which is often, you know, unduly influenced by other um, economic forces and 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 organizations that that produce products that they make a lot of money on, pharmaceuticals and things. You know, often, you know, these um, approaches to help people heal themselves. Uh, is is cast as you know voodoo and oh no don't do that and there's a fear based um, mentality that's propagated mm -hmm. the propaganda fear based propaganda sure. people we live in an information world now do your research it's it's podcasts like this that hopefully will stimulate something in your own journey right. to find the knowledge and take the steps to help your body heal itself. Share this episode for that very reason. Let me tell you something. I want you to talk about Root Cause, the movie. It was, I thought it was a great documentary. I, I thought there was an entertainment factor that just kept people's interest, right? Yeah. It was a story. It was the producer's story. The yeah. guy who produced it, actually, his story about how his root canal, unknowing to him, is why he was sick. And it took him how many years? And I love the way it started because I would describe it as my story. And matter of fact, 
I watched it with Tommy, who I mentioned, because he was like, you have to see it, Dan. This is our story, right? And he, the, he did everything. He did right. this. He goes through the, everything. He did like a shaman. He was a shaman. Yeah, I mean, and he goes through this whole thing because he went through. He was the doer. He was me. Yeah, no, it happened. I was going to do start, everything. It started. Yeah. He broke up a fight between a yeah. guy and his girlfriend. He gets punched. And then the guy punches him in the, in the face. He breaks a tooth. He goes to the dentist. Dennis says, I got to do a root canal. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, in 36 years, I've seen a lot of bad root canals. So I, I would say that, or, or, or something happened, they worked on the tooth, they did it afterwards. So it, it leads me to believe that he probably wasn't a sterile tooth mm -hmm. that got busted. It probably got infected. Yeah. And then they did a root canal, and the root canal basically sealed the infection there. And actually, uh, and there was that classic oral systemic, oral systemic, thing this guy couldn't get out of bed this guy pain weight pain, coming, everything yeah. and, you know even like sexual dysfunction with his girlfriend yeah i know like, you hear you know what but see but that story i hear that story yeah. all the time i mean yeah. I, you know i work with clients all around the world yeah. man i hear that story and that was story was me man i did everything and then i got to the cause of why i got sick and that's the that's, and, 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 and i want to tell you that i had i had so many colleagues of mine who said, oh, that's BS and this and that. And I, and I have a buddy. Well, they took it down. Man. Yeah, well, the, the American, yeah. I think the American Association of Endodontists and all. I mean, there was, it, some of it was a little sensationalized. The message was true, though. The message was true. They took it down and they, they actually filed a lawsuit because they didn't want everyone to think that everyone who has a, oh, I'm sorry, uh, everyone who has a root canal should run to their dentist to get their teeth ripped. Well, out. of course, I, I knew uh, that's why they took it. Out, and that's why that's why yeah. they did that. But the but reality I, I, is, I will say this: if you have a root canal, get a cone beam. Yeah, get a cone beam. That's the right answer. The right answer is this: a dental X-ray. And I had a woman yesterday who was uh, who was here at the end of the day, and literally she came with her dental X-ray from her previous dentist, and her previous dentist said. Um, she um, she had a root canal on an upper bicuspid, and the root canal was failing. And the dentist said, "Oh, I don't want to take that out because then you you know we you don't have enough bone for a dental implant and get the root canal redone." And she she said intuitively, "I don't think I want that, doctor. I I think this tooth has been bothering me ever since this root canal was done. I want that tooth out." And the dentist said, no, no, no. If you were my wife, I would tell you how to get a root canal. It's crazy. They'll retreat it. It'll be fine. She went and spent thousands of dollars to retreat the root canal. It is far from fine. Mm. Um, I had her get a cone beam. And even looking at her regular x-rays, you could see a little inflammation around it. Well, the cone beam showed a massive infection. Well, that, that one yesterday, you, you pulled a root canal out. It looked massively infected yes. to me. I mean, when I saw the cone beam, I could see it. Um, yeah. you know, so what you'll see is you'll see black areas mm -hmm. around the tooth on there. Just here's, here's the, you know, if you want to, we can talk about that now, about root canal and why they work and why they don't work. Right. Okay. Um, most don't work. Right. Um, and I, I have to say, and I, I went into practice 35 years ago. I took over a practice from a dentist who had passed away of a heart attack. And, uh, and he was mercury toxic, I can tell you that, because the whole office, <laughs> of course. There was, I opened the drawers, and there was mercury rolling around the drawer. I literally had to get, like, hazmat. Sickest profession on the planet, by the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, if you think about it, and a lot of dentists don't stop to think about it, the dentist had the highest rate of suicide when yeah. I graduated. Yeah. The highest rates of depression, mm -hmm. the highest rates of neurological diseases, many like Parkinsonism. I know dentists who had MS, but I know dentists who committed suicide too. And yes, was it was it the mercury? Uh, I would say that the mercury predisposed them to going into a neurological depression. Yeah. Uh, and that neurological depression is fueled by this um, a lot of uh, psychological transference and counter-transference of, of behavior mm -hmm. between uh, doctor and patient, but they're sensitized and all. I mean, I know, wow. and I, you know, I'm embarrassed to say that dental amalgam came out in the, you know, Civil War days, you know, and actually, 
they were putting lead in teeth. So I guess the mercury was the next evolution of yeah, lead, exactly. but there were pro-mercury dentists yeah. and anti-mercury yeah, yeah. dentists. Right. Even then. Mm -hmm. The pro-mercury dentists formed what we know of as the American Dental Association, ADA. which actually held the patent on dental amalgam. Mm -hmm. Dental amalgam is 52% mercury, 26% silver. So to call it a silver filling is really a misrepresentation. Yeah. Any dentist doing that can actually, I think, has a problem um, with um, 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 a violation and, and fraudulent misrepresentation because if they say, hey, you know, Dan, I'm gonna put a silver filling in, you're like, oh, it's in the back, it's not gonna show. Yeah. But if the dentist said, hey, Dan, I'm gonna put a mercury filling in. I don't want that. Yeah, so 52% yeah, mercury, it should be called a mercury filling, not yeah. a silver filling. Well, and, and it leaches mercury, the life of the filling. It off-gasses. So when right. I was in dental school, that's another very interesting point. Mm -hmm. In dental school, I was told that the mercury was magically locked in. Yes. I remember that. I mean, like, people are still it, being told that. How is it people locked in? Oh, when you mix it together, yeah. the mercury stays in. Yeah. Now we have mercury vapor analogs. You can read it. It's leaching in, mercury. In the wet environment with saliva because hot, hot, cold acid. If you clench your teeth or grind your teeth or you drink hot liquids, it off gases and it continues to off gas. And yeah. for that percentage of the population that is deficient in the ability to eliminate and excrete, um, these people get very sick. Yeah, well, it, listen, it vaporizes mercury constantly. It gets worse with hot, cold, obviously even the acid in your mouth creates it. That mercury vapor crosses the blood brain barrier and turns to inorganic mercury. And there it's trapped for life unless you do the right process. And, exactly. and, and, but here's the other frustrating thing for me is people have these things in their mouth and they're doing all this detox. And meanwhile, yeah. you know, it's pouring into the filling. So that's another subject. Yeah, no, I had, but, I had breakfast this morning with a brilliant physician, a brilliant osteopath um, who understands brain and gut and this and that. And over here, you know, he was talking to me about xylitol, and it's good because it lowers people. And I mean, it doesn't understand that it's disturbing to the mic. So there's, there's, here's a brilliant sure doctor. Right. <laughs> here's a brilliant doctor sure who's, who's like completely uh, in, in at a loss because of this wall that's existed between medicine and dentistry, and that wall needs to come down. Yeah. So. Um, one of the things that, that I, you know, I spent the breakfast educating him about the oral microbiome, about cavitation, about he knew that there are diseases in the mouth that have profound effects now yeah. on the body. Well, you know, just to finish off the root canal conversation, um, these root canals, I, I think it was Boyd Haley who did, he had all of the, uh, dentists sending root canals, even like non painful root canals, right? right? They were sending root canals in the study. They found anaerobes, anaerobic bacteria, yes. nasty bacteria, the ones that make you sick in every root canal. I mean, yeah. they all had it. Yeah. Be, it's because well, it's there's a perfect these, anaerobic environment. It is, but there's all these tubules yeah. that they yeah. get in, not the so, complicated. And but. this is to kind of educate uh, those who are watching this podcast about root canal. The concept itself, you know, of saving the tooth was something that dentists always want to do. Yeah. You know, we always want to save teeth. Frankly, and, so. and I know some endodontists um, uh, that are artists at getting the canal instrumented and sealed at the apex. Here's the problem. The problem is there are thousands of lateral, there, a tooth is basically like a sponge. There are thousands of dentinal tubules. And as a matter of fact, you can Miles. see, even though these are microscopic tubules, yeah. Bacteria can be stacked two and three across one of these tubules, and there are thousands of them in the tooth. So you can't really sterilize a tooth and put this inorganic um, filling material in what you call gut aperture and allow this to, to uh, remain without some sort of any bacteria in those lateral tubules. They don't often die off. In fact, they set up a little party because now anaerobes don't want to be anywhere near oxygen or blood supply. So you're really sealed off from oxygen and blood supply. So what happens is you get a powerhouse of anaerobic activity. Right. Second thing is, is that um, very often um, what, what happens in these situations is most dentists can't sterilize even the central canal. Most dentists 
hit obstructions in this canal and they fill short or they overfill. So you have all these uh, areas of chronic inflammation. As a matter of fact, I was on the phone with the head of oral pathology at New York University just a few weeks ago, and she was saying to me, and she was, uh, I often biopsy what I find inside cavitations and try and get a, a picture. And there was a foreign material that was in a cavitation that I was treating around a former root canal area. And it was just a giant void in the jaw. And, um, and she was like, if she couldn't, it was actually a packing material that was still in the jaw. And then we, the topic of, of root canal came up and she said, Dr. Curatola, I have never biopsy, seen a biopsy of tissue around a root canal that didn't show signs of chronic inflammation. Yeah. And she said, we call, we joke around our pathology office, we call root canal the voodoo that you do. And, and I left. I said, what is that? The voodoo that you do? They do. And, and so, you know, the reality is it, it, I have changed my position on root canal therapy as an optimal treatment. As a matter of fact, the dental literature and the dental research is now showing that um, dental implants, and we could talk about that because I see the move into ceramic dental implants, an important one, especially yeah, metal implants. Yeah. Um, peri-implantitis, all kinds of problems, but a new study from Germany showing that the new 5G cell net actually beats the implants and, you know, when yeah, you from mean your from cell, cell phone, phone. Cell okay, phone yeah. 5G network is a, uh, do your research on 5G, everyone. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a, it's a very, um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, has a lot of major health problems. There's been no biologic studies on the effects of 5G, but they are coming out now, and it is not good of what we're finding out about 5G. But anyway, getting back, um, the pro problems of chronic inflammation, whether it's from around a root canal, whether it's from a cavitation, whether it's from gum disease, these are all areas of, of, of chronic, low-grade inflammation that has very potent effects systemically right so let, let's um let's talk about solution here you know so we're talking about cavitations where teeth were extracted heals over creates a hidden infection 25 years later creates a problem saw it yesterday in the chair right i mean here was i i just have to show this picture because there was a few problems obviously um this was that hole that you're looking at right there that's where the root canal came out jerry that's yeah. that's what they're yeah. seeing okay and let me show yeah, so, you. Oh, I want to go back go to ahead, that. Go ahead, so. so this is what the bone looks like. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, they can. Um, that's what the bone looks like. Uh, when I removed this tooth yesterday, the bone wasn't a healthy color. The bone around that root canal that had infection uh, around both of the, the apices, and there was a fracture in one of the roots, the bone was brown. So you had this, and often I'll remove a root canal where not only does the root look a horrific color because it necrosis. So it's the only area of the body, and believe me, I, I, I'm in the business of saving teeth. But if I see something that could be a source of infection, not just for the mouth, but for the entire body, that needs to be eliminated. Root canal is the only procedure done in medicine and, and dentistry where you, where you leave something dead, dead. Yeah. in the human body right. because there is a natural process of necrosis that right. does go on. And, you know, a lot of endodontists and I've had, you know, I've had a lot of heated debates with friends of mine who are endodontists who claim that, well, um, there is a peripheral circulation to the roots from the tiny ligaments that are attached to keep the bone. That's not nearly uh, enough right. um, to keep that root from necrosing. This is this was her cavitation. So that was a root canal. This is that's a, behind. That, he the broke through with bone. laser. So the, what you're looking at is the top of the bone, and then right through it is where he broke through into that dark hole. That's the cavitation yeah. right there. Okay, that's so not, that's not even the size of it. What no, I no, what I do is I, I access it. The lesion is actually this large. I access from here, so I just need access with the laser to disinfect it, clean it out, and then use PRF and some grafting material Which we're to basically show you. get this lesion to heal. 
So it, it was interesting because you said this girl had gut problems her whole life, diagnosed with Lyme, as I said, low immunity, et cetera. No wonder she wasn't healing. No one got to the cause. But that was also on the meridian of her small intestine, her yeah, colon. Gut. Uh, and yeah, so I mean, so gut nice and heart. So your yeah. wisdom teeth, everyone, energetically um, on a meridian chart are connected to your gut, um, small intestine, and uh, heart. Yeah. and heart so you see i've had people with you know irregular um they were having conductivity issues mm -hmm. they were actually had a patient who was scheduled for a cardiac ablation that's where they go in and burn um these fibers that are causing fibrillation um to the heart so you actually they they burn ablate uh and and cauterize um, this tissue to stop the irregular heartbeat. Scheduled for that. <laughs> Patient so, was scheduled for that, had a huge, similar to that one, a huge cavitation. And treated the cavitation, and he began to have uh, the abnormal, the arrhythmia um, reversed itself. Mm. So the body can heal. Our no bodies doubt. can heal. No doubt. All right, let's talk solution because a lot of changes have been made. And I'm going to show you a video here in a moment of my wife. But okay, so I tell people now, look, um, laser to me is taking this to a whole nother level. The old days, even done properly, they were using just some injected ozone, which is fine. But 50, 60% of these things would a year later, two years later, would still go bad. Right. So there's been some changes. Laser is one of them. Something called PRF, using bone graph. We're going to show some yeah, of these I, things. All of that has made this um, much, much better. Absolutely. So um, cavitation surgery, a lot of it originated in Europe. I mean, here we were never taught this in dental school. Some oral surgeons used to go in. You know, they'd be looking at, and really, um, this whole seemingly epidemic of cavitations is only because we've become aware of it. Um, there was, you know, we were sort of in the dark. Yeah, now with, with two cone beam, where you know, we had seen panoramic, it, yeah. we had panoramic X-rays. Cone beam ten years ago wasn't really very commonplace. So, right. a lot of times, oral surgeons would be looking to put an implant in, and we used to actually classify the bone. That classification came around, um, actually later also when implants started mm -hmm. becoming popular. We had type one bone is like plywood, type two bone was like pine, uh, type three was like balsa wood, and type four was like wispy nothing, you know, like this void. And they would say, "Oh, that's type four bone." Well, isn't it interesting that the type four bone is in the shape of a wisdom tooth that was extracted? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Cavitation. It was like type that four bone. Just happened yeah. to form like the wisdom tooth uh, did. Right. You know. So then we started realizing, "Hey, wait a minute." And then G. B. Black spoke about this. And there's a lot of literature about this. This is not something that's that's new. It's not something that we just discovered. It's just something that we're better able to diagnose. Them. Right, right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the way they used to do this is they would take a dental drill and take away, because often there's like an eggshell of, of cortical bone that grows on yeah, the Yeah, you couch. kind of saw that in that picture. Yeah, in that picture. picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and even in, in, in the pictures you'll show of Marilyn yeah. here, mm -hmm. she had like a little thin, thin mm -hmm. thing of bone and then just hollow. Yeah like a hollow cave. Yeah, we'll show and you that. Um, so what they used to do is they used to take a dental drill to the jaw, drill out this whole thing with a dental drill, which is terribly traumatic. Anytime you stick a dental drill on jawbone, on living tissue like that, there's a huge inflammatory. So now you're response. doing that with laser, which the is... The laser is ingenious because the laser, and there's only certain lasers that do work that are that you can use on hard tissue and soft tissue. So this laser, the Waterlays uh, uh, I Plus by BioLays, was being used, and I was using it to regenerate bone around periodontally involved teeth because it's a wavelength of light that stimulates my, what we call mitotic division of the osteoblast. And in English, that means it stimulates the cells that make new bone mm. to divide. Right. So when you get mitotic division, you get cell division, you grow the bone back. Right. I use my hands a lot because I'm Italian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, the getting the bone to grow back, but but here's the great thing about using the laser: much less 
trauma. Uh, I, you know what I so, got mine done? I, bear, I don't even know that I am. I have patients it. come to me and the next day they are not swollen. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, and I think it's a combination of that and using the platelet rich fibrin from their blood. So, yeah, so let, we're, you're going to see that, but we take the blood. It's like basically yeah. putting stem cells in I, there I, to make I, it simple. I draw a couple of vials of blood from, from your arm, uh, and then we spin it down on a special centrifuge that separates the plasma and red blood cells. And then there is something in the middle, like a yellow jelly that's in your blood, that's called platelet-rich fibrin, or PRF platelet rich fibrin it's got platelets but it, it is loaded with we found that it's a rich source of mesenchymal stem cells mm -hmm. stem cells are wonderful as you know you've mm -hmm. done a lot of yep. research in the stem cell area and it, and it's got some growth factors everything good and hey it's a biologic tissue from your body that's going into another part of your body to help it heal so that, that's brilliant. wonderful. Yeah, it's brilliant. I, I say if they're not doing that, don't get it done. Go to make sure you go to a dentist that's doing that procedure. Look, a, a video is worth 10,000 words. <laughs> so let's, let's cut away to this is my wife, Marilee. And when you're, you're going to get to see the bone graft. You're going to get to see the PRF. You're going to get yeah. to see the laser. And you're going to see all that. And then, then we'll come back. And then you can make some comments. And we'll actually show you. Uh, the before and after let's try of that. my wife Marilyn. So let's cut away. Okay, so uh, Jerry, um, we went in because we were we saw a little area here on the cone beam. We can point it out right back there, and we will go back and remind you of what the first one looked like but yeah, so as reason, you can see the there's a lot why, the reason why we like more support here is because this is the sinus and when you're this close to the sinus there is something called an oral antro communication so communication from the mouth to the sinus infection in the mouth infection in the sinus very often we see these sometimes you'll have a sinus infection it'll feel like a toothache Right. Sometimes you'll have a toothache, but it's really a sinus infection. Well, and again, we'll, when we come from this, we're going to show you these boxes side by side. This right. is the new one, and you can see the sinus, and you'll see on the other one, that had a centimeter of inflammation. Now you yeah. don't, and this is all bone, except for this area we were concerned about. So if you go down where that blue line is, I don't know if you can see that on there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where the blue line is, is the area that we really want to kind of clean out and mm -hmm. fill in with the platelet-rich fibrin, which we took We're going to show blood, you that in a second. And also with the bone grafting material that we used to place in there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing that right now, but I can show you the material right here. So this is actually what platelet-rich fibrin looks like. Mm -hmm. So we and spun down our blood. We spun down our blood. We get these, uh, this material, which comes almost like a yellow jelly. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little bit of blood with it but a yellow jelly. It's loaded with mesenchymal stem cells and it's loaded with um, growth factors. Mm -hmm. And um, what we find is that this is an excellent biologic grafting material that is readily accepted by the body. It comes from the body. Right. And uh, this is an excellent way of stimulating regeneration. Yeah. So we're using it in bone, we're using it in gum tissue, we're using it even in teeth. Um, we can use platelet rich fiber. Here's uh, another batch of platelet rich fiber mixed with a little bit of allographic bone. So allographic bone is human bone. We use it. The bone grafting material is strictly a scaffold for your body to make bone cells to grow again. That scaffolding helps fill in and support this area. As your body makes bone, the grafting material resorbs and disappears. So what people have to understand is we're not sticking bone in there and that's the bone. Right. We're actually assisting the body to heal itself. Right. And, and that's and what this is about. 
So the old way of doing it was, hey, we would open up these cavitations and we would uh, inject some ozone in there, hit it with right. some ozone. Yes. But uh, a year later, which is where we are, in her, a year later, 50% of them would go bad. That's right. Yeah. You know, I like to say that the old way of treating jaw osteo necrosis or jaw cavitations was sort of like a right church, wrong pew. Mm -hmm. It was a right church because, yes, it's, it can be a problem. These lesions left alone. Um, we have found Lyme spirochetes in their mold, candida, all kinds of different pathogens have been identified in these areas in the bone. When these areas, though, are opened up and cleaned out and used ozone, so that all that is good. Using ozone, cleaning that is good. The problem is there wasn't an effective re regeneration right, which of the gives. defect that was there. Right. So what we want to do is we want to regenerate. How do we regenerate? We use this laser. Right, so, which you just did. Yeah, on her. Just just did. Laser. Yep, so we just hello. use this laser. Uh -huh. So this laser lung, um, debris the area. And then it does something called bone decortication. Bone decortication is a way of stimulating the cells that make new bone to grow back. Right. So it stimulates mitotic division of the osteoplast. Right. Grow new bone. So I, I would say that this new method, number one, is the laser. Number two is, you know, using the PRF yeah. with some of the grafting material. Yeah. And now we're at about a 90% or 98% success rate a year yeah. later without I'd reinfection. Well over 90%. Yeah. Remember, the key with any lesion in the jaw is to get is to get it to heal. Right. Get it to grow back. Yeah. So you can kill everything that's in there. But what you really want to do is promote regeneration. Mm -hmm. and, and regenerative dentistry, regenerative medicine, that's the most exciting thing. Yeah. Like the, the, yeah. the advances in laser and stem cells, as you know, mm -hmm. even, you know, um, generating killer cells, like yeah. uh, you, were, you talked yeah. about in some of the programs. All of this, I think, is the future of medicine. Regeneration. No, no, no well, look, we, we just uh, we did a Facebook Live, um, and we had a, a gal kind enough in this chair right here, I mean, literally an hour ago, yeah. that was so sick, no one ever found, diagnosed with Lyme disease, gut problems yeah. for most of her life. I mean, in all these years, nobody went upstream, and what we found was horrific. What we found, yeah. what you found, I just happened to be in the surgery One of the here. largest cavitations. Yeah, it was horrible. One of and, the largest cavitations I've seen. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we, I mean, spirochetes in there, black stuff, uh, these things that just yeah, looked yeah, unidentifiable know. came out. Yeah, yeah. and then right. you know, it, it was a, it was a sad case because she also had a, a metal crown over amalgam that you said you pulled out about three thermometers full of mercury out of two thirds of the tube. Yeah, was an amalgam which is fifty two percent mercury underneath another metal crown. Of a dissimilar metal, right? So it creates galvanism. Yeah. Galvanism causes, uh, you know, it actually cranks mercury out of the amalgam. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, so, we'll we'll talk more about that sure. on, on this show, as a matter of fact. But you know, we this was a year ago, about a year ago, and we just wanted to do a recone beam just to make sure she was yeah. healing because you know we, we just obviously we want to be better safe than sorry. Sure. You, you sure. saw that little lucency and said, let's just go in and take a look at it. And you stimulated the healing again. We'll put PRF in there again. Yeah. But at least there was no infection. But right. this will speed up uh, the healing. So. so three things. Her sinus looked so much better. Oh, I mean, we're, we're showing before and after yeah, here yeah, on the show. show so, yeah. Sinus looked so much better. She had a lot of healthy bone there. Mm -hmm. And in the area where she didn't have, the only reason why I wanted to put some additional clean it out, disinfect it again, and put more PRF and graft, is because we want to support a sinus membrane. Yeah. We don't want there to be a lack of bony support under the membrane. Right, which last time there was, it was a mess. Was yeah. All right, Jerry, how are you? All we're, right. we're, we're gonna learn more. Very Stay good. tuned. All right, Jerry, any comments on that, what we just saw? Yeah, it, it, I, what I wanted to say, and, and I want to talk about bone grafting for a minute, mm -hmm. because people have a misunderstanding about bone grafting. Mm -hmm. So all bone grafts, we have four different types. We have human bone um, from your own body, um, which is a painful thing to take bone from the body. Sometimes we 
We've actually done hip grafts and all kinds of things. So you have um, bone from your own body. You have human bone, which um, people like, oh, oh it's from uh, cadaver. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, you take the kidneys, yeah. you take the lung, you take well, the heart. Well, if you take blood, right, you get a blood transfusion or blood from somebody else. Right. So, so there is um, human bone, which actually tends to work the best, either your own or, 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 or human bone. Then we have synthetic bone. And then we have animal bone, often pig or cow. So there's porcine and bone. What do you, bone. Which one do you like? I like the uh, the human bone. Okay. Uh, and now, now, so here's the thing about the graft. There are cells in our bodies uh, that make bone called osteoblasts. Mm-hmm. There are cells that remodel or take bone away Class. called osteoclasts. Any um, imbalance in that osteoblast and osteoclastic activity, you end up with things like osteoporosis, you end up with osteopenia, um, there's all kinds of problems. So the osteo, um, the the bone that's grafted is actually a scaffold. It does not stay. Right. Yeah. So it's a scaffold for the osteoblast to kind of grow and make So now you're, you're putting the stem cells in there around this scaffolding. Right. And now we're able to fill in the hole, the yeah. void. So, so in, one, in one of those dishes um, uh, with, with Merrily, we had pure PRF. Yeah. And then we had PRF mi- mixed with some human bone. Yeah, you saw that. And, and that is the bone uh, that acts as a scaffold for Merrily Merrily's body to make new bone and grow and you and you packed it in that deep hole I mean you saw these deep holes I I showed you on on the the video yeah and packing it in there now and then you stitched it over and now that form yeah well what we do is we'll use so he packs it in those deep holes there that you're seeing there as well as that big hole yeah so there are there are times where we don't need to use the bone grafting Mm -hmm. When it's a smaller, like in a, in some single root extractions, we could just put PRF, and that's enough to stimulate the bone and for the osteoblast to use that. Right. Um, then there are times where we will use the grafting material. But what I want people to understand is we're helping the body heal itself, yeah. so that graft material becomes a scaffold. The osteoclasts eat away. And, and that old bone. So that resorbs, and what you're left with is new bone that your body right. made. Yeah, your body made. You so know, well, I, three, I, get this, I get this a lot. Well, I went to my biological dentist, and um, he injected that with ozone, and it killed all the infection. Now, now I'm okay. Hey, the pain's gone. Hey, that does feel better. Actually, you know, even I feel better. Right. What's the problem with that? The problem with that is ozone is wonderful um, as a very uh, what i love about ozone it has so many wonderful properties well, your laser the produces body. ozone yeah the and yeah. the laser produces it, it generates ozonated water and we use ozone gas and we use separate mm-hmm. ozone water too right. the, the key to think about here is ozone is not magic ozone converts to peroxide it has a wonderful effect it actually helps another good thing about ozone is it brings blood supply back mm-hmm. so it helps to open the blood supply, so does the laser do that. So the laser, when we see blood, we're very happy. Yeah, yeah. Blood is uh, is Antibodies. a life force. Mm-hmm. It, it's an important part of the healing process. So we wanna bring blood back to this dead necrotic area that didn't really have a blood supply. And what we, what so ozone has its place. The problem about using ozone alone is using ozone alone, you just basically nuke everything. You bring a little circulation, but you don't regenerate that. Uh, you, know, you know, here's the example I love to give. It's like, okay, you can chase the bears out of the cave, but as long as there's a cave, more bears are going to end up in the cave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. the bottom line. So you have to get rid of the caves, and then the bears don't come back, right? right? So, I mean, the name, of, the name of the game here, Dan, is regeneration. Yeah, absolutely. We that's, want that's regeneration. Does ozone have a place? Absolutely. Well, I mean, but but these I've seen people, and this is this is an interesting point. I've had many patients come to me who have had several cavitational surgeries in areas where the bone looks like Swiss cheese. Yeah. And the bone has not healed. And they've gone back and the de- and the biologic dentist is saying, oh, let me do another ozone injection. Let me do another ozone yeah. here and ozone there. Ozone also nukes the, the biofilm. So, you know, you need a balance. You know, I, I, I do believe in ozone. I do use ozone, but I don't, I use it responsibly. 
and a lot of biologic dentists are taught use on ozone every. They're ozonating all the gums every time the patient comes in because they have a little um, gingivitis. Right. Gingivitis is a biofilm imbalance. You don't want to use napalm and you know you know scorched earth policy. What you really want to do is promote rebalancing. And that's why you know I I developed I. I developed this. Ah, there you go. Okay. I use it every day, by the way. It's yeah. on our website. So this toothpaste is prebiotic. We have vitamin K2 and D3. We have CoQ10 and vitamin C was, and vitamin E was the first component. It. Here's what I love about it. You can actually eat it. It's, not it's a dietary supplement. <laughs> it actually so, does. So it really what this does, the reason why we found gum stop bleeding in a matter of days, the reason why we found that you get a close to a 70% reduction of gingival inflammation in two weeks with double blind clinical research we did in Europe and the United States is, is because we are fostering microbial homeostasis. We're not nuking all the bacteria. We're actually getting we're the same bacteria. This was the biggest breakthrough understanding that I had in my research in developing this. The greatest, and by the way, I can't put but toothpaste is regulated as cosmetic, so you can't make these claims, but we can show lots of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so, unless we want to go through the, you know, an IND and, uh, and, and uh, no, 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 an FDA, you have to file a new drug application, it's yeah. called an NDA. And I'm eating a toothpaste. By the way, it's really good. If you eat this much of commercial toothpaste, oh, yeah. you have to call poison control. It's true. <laughs> it's not true. It's fluoride but alone. Promoting, it's all about. You know, when you understand the science of the microbiome, you realize that products, you know, commercial products like Listerine, Colgate Bottle, and all these other products kill, 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 kill. Well, the natural companies came around and said, oh, why don't we use tea tree oil instead of triclosan? Mm -hmm. Well, tea tree oil is just as toxic to the microbiome yes. as as uh as triclosan yeah. so uh, meaning most of the uh, natural uh, toothpaste out there they have these nasty killers in that wipe out the microbiome which also affects the gut Let, let's uh let's tell uh Marley's story here very briefly and if you saw the last show um it was whatever a year ago my wife had this sinus drainage coming down she started getting abnormal cells in her nose that weren't healing started worrying me um, I said, "Hun, which side do you had your uh, your wisdom teeth out on? The right, the right. Okay, if you know my wife, if I tell her right, she goes left. She goes left. She goes right. Okay, and that's true. Okay, so I, I'm the so dumb one here. Wife. By the way, I'm the dumb one here. I believed her. Okay, for the first time, I believed her. Okay, it was the right. No, it was the left. Exactly where her drainage was. Whenever and, my wife directs me, yeah, and she says, "Honey, make a right." I'm like, "Okay, it's yeah, it's left. Yeah." <laughs> So when she tells me it's on the right, I should have said left, and oh gosh, what was I thinking? So anyway, bottom line was we ended up getting a cone beam. And uh, let me just show you Actually, what we found. Yeah. yeah, I'll have you explain it. So let me um, see if we can see this. Okay. Um, I want to bring it down to this, this one. Yeah, exactly. And I think so, we can see that. Yeah, go ahead. That's so her sinus that you're here, looking at. Here's the area where her wisdom tooth was. All of this black here that's is void. That's yeah, void. it's empty. So this whole area, about the size of the end of my finger, is is all cavitation. Mm -hmm. um, that there's a whole area of cavitation along the right, right there where that mm -hmm. was. But what's interesting, in addition to that, is whatever the heck is going on in there, she sure has a lot of. Yeah, that's like a, that's a side. centimeter of schmutz. <laughs> and just go to go to the other side. Yeah, the, there's the other side. Okay, can so you see the other side of here? Yeah, it's it's you know you can see there's no inflammation. So there's then you go yeah. here. Then you go here. And her sinus is, is a bit of a mess. Yeah. And actually, this is a good shot. Another angle of her sinus. Actually, we can show it up here, Dan. Um, let me just show you yeah. right here. She has areas where the congestion in her sinus is is almost a. And you're looking at a cone. That's beam. a cross section. Yeah. So the, yeah, and that's a this good is all point. A cone beam, yeah. The good thing about a cone beam is that we can look at this from many different angles. So, for example, what do you want me to go um, down here? You can go down here, but now I'll show you a cross section of up on the top. So where this blue line is, mm -hmm. if we go up here, you'll actually see 
black, 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 which is all void in this area between the dotted line, the solid line, and the dotted line. Mm -hmm. That area is all just empty. Right. But right above it, look at all the congestion in her sinus here. Yeah, massive. So and, like, and that's what was happening to her. She had to have a constant post-nasal drip, right. what we call yeah. PND. Now, you know, let, now let's show the one we did yesterday. So we did a another cone beam a year later, so yeah, approximately. Now, I'm actually talking about this. This is a really okay. important point. So, so now this area has healed. Mm -hmm. And if I bring this over here. What we were doing, there was a little void. So he went in so yesterday just to check it. You see, this is not black. This is filled. Yeah, filled. Okay. But if you remember, Merrily flew shortly after, mm -hmm. and we took a cone beam. Most of it's filled in. She has a little area here that still has not oh, filled in. Sure I got it. There, Eric, you got to show it again. Can you see this? Yeah, right area? there. Uh huh. But look at her sinus. Perfect. Clean. Mm -hmm. Clean. Sinus clean, and even up here, if we look here, uh, let's see if I can bring her sinuses back. Sinus is pretty clean. Yeah. Yeah. Especially there. Yeah. Further forward in the sinus, she had a little something there, uh -huh. but nothing down where that third molar was. Right. Yeah. So, but I want to make a point about this because there is an area here because this is, this bothered me. So that's when you went in yesterday, yeah. which you saw, you saw the right. video. So we, and we could talk about that right now. Yeah. Um, so this is very interesting because the success of the healing response, what I've come to, to learn is, I have a lot of patients who travel into me to have these procedures done. And the most important thing is I have to ground you for a little while. You can't jump on an airplane because I found a major contraindication to healing, especially in these delicate areas where bone is healing, you're up near the sinuses, you really can't be in a pressurized cabin. Oh, by the so way, I don't want you that, flying. That's or doing all scuba diving. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was stubborn. I had to go do a seminar, blah blah blah, the whole thing, and it went on the flight. I got this massive headache that was coming from my neck. Okay, this was two days after I got cavitation yeah, surgery. Way too soon. And those, it ended up literally going into my neck. Yeah. And and you, so you guys know that story because so that's anyone, how I got the stem cells. Anyone who's going to or traveling to a biologic doctor who is doing cavitation surgery. Um, you cannot fly. You cannot fly. So, of course, I've grounded merrily right now. Yeah. So, anyway, let's talk about that. Yesterday, I went into that little area, and I was intrigued because I was like, well, this is, you know, that should have been all, that should have been solid. It should have been healed perfectly. Well, anyway, I went in there, and there was a small amount of bone. I What I did is I put PRF, and I packed some more grafting and material to give her a nice solid base of bone in what's called that tuberosity area, in that third molar tuberosity area, because her sinus is right above that. So I wanted to give her some protection and some support for her sinus. Yeah. The important thing, again, is no flying, no scuba diving, and, uh, and really it, it's important uh, to understand that the healing process after the procedure is done is very very important yeah so, so if it's a big cavitation how long would you keep them here if they flew if, it, if it's York? if it's not near the sinus i i mean generally patients can come in midweek and leave by the monday after. okay all right and by the way okay so i i've had people from all over the world come and see you As a matter of fact every time i'm here i love it because i get to actually meet them right so i my, actually my clients everybody my, yeah. everybody who flew in over christmas got to see the radio city music hall rock cats <laughs> I had tickets for everybody for the shows, and I was like, "Go to a show, have a nice time, go to some restaurants, make it a uh, you know what what they call it uh, when you go to Mexico for stuff, have destination uh, destination medical surgery and you know, yeah. medical treatment." Um, but we, you know, it's a great thing if you can relax, enjoy, and take a peaceful trip home. I like to see patients generally three days after yeah. uh, after when they're healing. Uh, and I generally follow up by Skype, and I'm able to um, to actually have a Skype consult. Um, one great. of which I'm going to have a post-operative consult today uh, with a patient who was referred by you, mm -hmm. um, and who was treated. I get to meet all my my clients because I have clients all over the world, <laughs> and it's like I get to meet them here. I love love it. 
So, but let, let's talk about um, your expanding. Uh, we have a yeah. exciting thing that's happening. So, you know, this is, this is the most exciting thing. The wall between medicine and dentistry is coming down. So really the health centers, the wellness centers of the future are going to bring, and what Dan and I do, I think, are two of the most important aspects of helping people get well, and that is the oral systemic link. So it's dental and detox. <laughs> dental <laughs> and detox. <laughs> detox, yeah. dental. Yeah. And a lot of the detox, so, so look at this. There are patients who are toxic. They have, their functional medicine doctors are like, you're loaded with metals. Eliminating heavy metals from the body is a is not just a science but an art oh, and, right. and you have gotten that down because you lived it yeah. so you live that and that's what i love that you've helped so many people down yeah. because you've put them on a protocol that is um personalized for their particular um circumstances and that involves um not hitting it with a hammer where if you try to get the mercury out of the rest of you, you may get mercury out of your mouth, but if you've been found by your functional medicine doctor, your biologic doctor, uh, I never use what term to use anymore. I use biologic a lot because <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's easier. You know, you're, everything is biologic. Doctor, yeah. So if your biologic physician has, um, said you you're showing up in examination with uh heavy metals in, in in the diagnosis i highly recommend that you follow dr pompa's protocol because he is he is intuitive he is experienced and he does not you don't what i love that you do is you don't address this in a heavy-handed way because getting mercury out of the mercury is a very insidious uh, metal i find a lot of nickel by the way yeah. a lot of people have old yeah. uh, what we call porcelain fused to metal crowns, yeah, crowns which is yeah. basically a metal thimble with porcelain on top oh. and just this morning when i was walking in my office every crown i removed from the patient's mouth with metal i analyzed the metal and my i'm, I'm actually going to publish on it because i'm finding a high number of crowns that were done in the 1980s when the price of gold went very high. Yeah. The dental laboratories were using non-precious metals. They're up to 77% nickel. Uh, That's like pure nickel. And many times, dentists, you know, a lazy technique that dentists had is they make the crown and they leave the amalgam in the tooth. Here's one that, they, that oh, poor gal yesterday. Right. This, I don't even know if you can see that, but that shiny part in there, yeah, that's amalgam. And there was a crown that covered this big amalgam. He said enough mercury for three thermometers, yeah. and it was People covered don't. by metal. We had, that's called galvanism. It creates more mer mercury vapor, yeah. poisons you, basically. And it's an electrical current, so now you're a battery. Yeah, Galvan galvanism actually, um, what, what it's been found to do, is, especially with just like metals or metal like um, amalgam, an amalgam, a metal, um, it, it cranks the mercury out of the yeah. amount. So it off gases, Poor girl. it off gases more because of the electrical yeah. current created by the galvanism. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and that's one thing, but really, um, the center in East Hampton is opening in June. Uh, we're very excited about it. We're incorporating so many wonderful, um, wonderful therapies that have shown uh, great promise in helping people. Yeah, the end of June here. Yeah, so workers. listen, uh, and it's going to be, we're, we're bringing in all this good stuff together. And yeah. Fran Drescher is, is hosting it. My good friend Fran, if you're listening, <laughs> she is amazing. She is a cancer survivor, and she has become a wellness activist and using her celebrity position to yeah, promote awesome. wellness and 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 taking charge she said mm -hmm. if people um would you know people want something to stop they should use the power their purchasing power their consumer purchasing power to get bad products to go away mm -hmm. stop buying them yeah no i couldn't agree more there so <laughs> yeah detox done right is critical and you know i, I think that's another mistake people make is they get things like amalgam fillings out, and then they go, oh, okay, that's it. Well, the mercury's in the brain. And yeah. you know, one of, one of the things that, you know, my passion is teaching people the process, because one of the, my pet peeves is, oh, I did mercury detox. 
three months. Meanwhile, 25 years, 30 years, exactly. this mercury was going into <laughs> your brain and it's three months. So you have to learn the process. And that's right. what I tell my doctors, right. teach people the process, right? Docs, yeah. my docs listening, you know, we teach people the process and then yeah. they do it long enough to actually matter. Exactly. Well, listen, we, we covered a heck of a lot of material. We sure right did. Now, man. I, I love you, man. I can hang out here all day and look at this stuff. And uh, matter of fact, I, I'm ready to do a surgery now. Right ready on. to go in. Uh, All right, let's go. I would love to know. And I was fun though yesterday. I mean, I, I really I got teared up in there several times because I knew I was watching this girl's all this money yeah. and time and you know heartbreak and I was watching it change. You know, if if dentists out there and you know, my dream is to take is to take good dentists and and just put a bio so biologic dentistry is not a specialty. I'm I'm a I'm a very, very competent, very, very good um, restorative dentist. Um, I do beautiful cosmetic dentistry. Wow. All that is well and good. Just put a biologic cap on If I could get dentists, and one of my biggest um, regrets was, you know, in 2006, I named, I gave a naming gift to New York University for a clinical research wing. It's a curatola wing for yeah. clinical research. Yeah. And that was to promote translational research. And I was doing research, micro, uh, oral microbiome research. I was passionate about getting study, getting greater understanding of, of, of our microbial composition yeah. and, and what, what we're starts made of. here, by the way. But I, I, I wish I had instead given the money to open a center for integrative dentistry so that dentists could start to put this biologic cap on and take the most talented graduating um, fourth year dental students and put them now, train them to think biologically, looking at root causes yeah. of disease and not treating the symptoms. Don't look at the patient as a walking tooth. Look at the patient as this living, uh, amazing life force yeah. that's in a tenth of the body uh, as Paul calls it uh, and the reality is that you know we have this divine ability God-given ability to self-regulate and heal and understanding mm -hmm. that and just understanding that mindset they'd be able to look in patients mouths and be able to diagnose um, toxicity. Yep. They'd be able to look at, at at the root causes of disease in the mouth and work in tandem uh, with doctors like you. Yep. Well, you can uh, root cause movie. We mentioned the movie root cause. If you want to see it, it was taken off Netflix, but it's rootcausemovie.com. And actually, you could put that up when we actually spoke about the movie as well on the bottom. So you should see it. But uh, share this episode with many. This is a life changer, man. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Love you, Matt. Let's go check my bike. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. This episode was brought to you by Cyto Detox. Please check it out at buycytonow.com. We'll be back next week and every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. We truly appreciate your support. You can always find us at CellularHealing.tv and please remember to spread the love by liking, subscribing, giving an iTunes review, and sharing the show with anyone you think may benefit from the information heard here. And as always, thanks for listening.